guys, how's it going? Welcome back. We have the Boss VE1 Vocal Echo pedal that we're going to demo for you guys and talk about, show you some features. So before we get into all the features of this cool little pedal, let's give it a shot and see what happens. So, we've got uh, a Shure SM58 mic. The sound is coming from my PA speakers. Uh, that I have in here because I actually have PA speakers and I have studio monitors and and all that. And I like having the PA speakers because I actually get to hear what things are actually going to go like in the end too, which is kind of nice. Anyways, uh, so I'm recording this course on my Sony uh, Ultra HD camcorder with its own mic, so you get my room sound too. So there you go. So we're going to start out with a dry signal, no effects other than the enhancement button. All the enhancement button actually does, so we'll get into that right quick. Um, let's see, that is number three. So the enhancement button uh, smooths out inconsistencies in the input volume so that the vocal has better definition. So you can have it off, which means no lights are on. Green is a slight enhancement where it is, and red is a very strong enhancement, which it really jacks up the levels too through the system and really, um, I find it gets a little tinny. We'll show you that after though. Anyways, so we're on green. So that effect is in use. So just a dry signal. I wanna serve you Lord for the rest of my days. I want to be So that's very dry and very boring and dull and it's like bleh. But I mean if you're recording, you probably will want to go in dry to your recording software um, initially and then do all your enhancements later. But if you don't want to go through all that torturous fun and pain um, and you just want to do things or you're playing live, you're going to need that that effect now kind of thing right so let's turn on the first level effect now I picked a favorite that I, I like and I set the level where I want it to be in the tone definition of it and uh, let's do her So you can hear just by me talking in this thing, we do have some level. And I actually want to bring my vocals up a bit more, so I don't want to over blast, but I want you to be able to hear what's going on. I actually turned my guitar like way down, because I checked my last recording, I'm like, no, we got to turn the guitar way down. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. So it is a totally different sound you get. Now, this doubling effect, which is pretty cool, you just instantly clone yourself. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. two of me yeah it's kind of cool so hopefully you can hear that well enough between the three um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to you know continue playing so we'll start out dry again you can also do a dry double too eh dry double dry double I want to serve you Lord for the rest of my days I want to be like Jesus 
which is still dull and boring. Okay, so straight out. I wanna serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. Now we're gonna just go a cappella, which <laughs> don't criticize me, okay? Like I really don't do a cappella, but it'll give you an even better idea of how this pedal alters things. I'm gonna put our guitar down. I think with even turning the guitar down, it's probably gonna end up being a little loud, but I wanna serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. I want to make the lame to walk and the blind to see. So that's completely dry. Well, that's with a doubler. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. Okay, so that's kind of like, it's so dull and boring. You know, like, no effect sucks. So if you're like, um, you, you know, if you're like me, I'm on a worship team, right? And, uh, you know, you're going through the PA and you're trying to lead people into worship. Dull and boring is dull and boring. So you need some enhancement in your vocals, right? But if you're even a regular musician, regardless, you need to have something in your voice to wetten it up. Reverb, uh, reverb and delay mix, that sort of thing. Um, never straight delay, but I guess if your song does it, whatever. I'm not a big fan of straight out delay. But anyway... I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. I want to make the lame to walk and the blind to see. Okay, so let's double it. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. I want to make the lame to walk and the blind to see. Open up the prison doors and set the captives free. Oh Lord, I want to be like Jesus. And before you sing, clear your throat too. It really helps. <coughs> ah, there we go. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. So you can rewind the video and check it from start to finish on what we just did a cappella. Okay, so let's get down and pop a squat on the floor so we can play with the pedals with our fingers and go through some controls for you. So we're going to start out at the beginning and we're going to go 12 o'clock. Now this has like a pitch control system in it, okay? So kind of like a hard auto tune because nothing to automate it. That's the one thing I really love about the VE2 pedal from Boss. Fully automated pitch control, instantaneous. Nobody even knows it's on. They just think you're a fantastic singer because you're singing in perfect pitch. Um, because it auto senses the key too that you're playing your instrument in and it puts everything together. So that's one thing that doesn't happen here. So this is a little different, but it did come out probably first. So um, this is a nice pedal. Either way, it does a fantastic job. So, we have pitch correction here, the way we, we can play with a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let's turn that on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, if you're, if you're going for this sort of uh, mechanical voice sounding, I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. I want to make the lame to walk and the blind to see. Open up the prison doors and set the captives free. Oh Lord, I want to be like Jesus in every way. I want 
wanna make the lame to walk, I wanna make the blind to see. I wanna make the lame to walk, that's off. Okay, I wanna make the lame to walk and the blind to see. It's kind of, um, I'm not a fan of the pitch control thingy. But it can do some neat things if you want to change some things about your song to make it sound kind of a little weird. Okay, because we want to make things a little weird. I want to be... It's kind of neat. Ah, you hear that waver? Ah, that's nothing. Ah, I want you can hear the ticking too. I want to be. I want to be. I am going crazy. So it's kind of a weird thing. You you're gonna have to kind of figure that one out on your own. I personally don't like the correction, so it'll be off for me all the time. Um, but I don't really need um, pitch correction in my vocals anyways, um, except for certain things. I'm working on a Cutlass song that I'd like to be able to play, sing that second verse, but I won't be doing it with this kind of a pitch control. I'm gonna need the BE2 pedal to get away with that. Or just train my vocals to get to that level, which is a lot of extra work. And I like to kind of cheat some of that work. Um, so anyways, let's uh, check out some of these other different uh, effects. So this is number one, there's seven. Number two, number two, number two, number one, number two, number three. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. That's actually not bad, I like that one. I want to serve you, Lord. One, that's like a lot of extra, like, big haul, right? You're in an auditorium today. One, two. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. you got to kind of find the right one for your song, right? Um, one, two. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to be... That kind of... I don't like that one too much. But you can also change the amount with the level of how much it gets. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. Which is kind of over-swamped. I want to serve you, Lord. That really cuts it back on that one. I want to be. I want to be. I want to serve you. Let's double clone ourselves. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. Holy, holy one, I want to be, I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be, you got this uh, tone um, characteristic. Change a little bit of the characteristics of the echo, right? It's kind of like a tonal control in a sense. Um, so they call it tone. I want to be, I want to be, I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. One, two, three. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to... Oh, that's bad. That's dry. We turned it off. Okay, we're back on and we're live! Coming from somewhere in the world. Okay, so, um, the foot switch, of course, is changing my double on and off. Now, you can use a dual foot switch, so you can go through your favorite memory presets that you set up yourself. So you can program, I believe, about three different presets and just scroll through them, right? So if you have, like, 
some songs set up and you know a couple of them use this one, a couple of them use that one. Really easy to use a foot switch instead of trying to lean over and, and bend. Especially when you're uh, blending songs one into the next. You're flowing your music. You would, you'd be better off with a foot switch to control those memory presets for those songs as opposed to trying to bend over because you can't play bend over and blend songs at the same time. Does not work! Okay, so a foot switch is very handy. Now this is just a Yamaha sustain pedal just for controlling my double effect because I don't care about memory effects. Um, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, do my thing. Um, but if I want to, I do have the necessary adapter and of course I can steal the other pedal off my keyboard and have both of them all ready with a cable and away I go. So I don't actually have anything to buy extra. But you can get the, uh, the Boss Foot Switches. Um, they have the FS, uh, F5 and FS series. Uh, the FS6 is going to be your best bet because it uses a, a stereo line cable and bingo. Runs on a 9 volt battery um, or you can go power supply I believe on that one too if I, if I remember correctly. I think you can. But this one here uses uh, four AA batteries that will last for like a gazillion hours. Um, or you can run a Boss 9 volt power supply. Okay. Um, so batteries or power supply, your option. Okay. Um, so, and it's easy to get access to the panel under here. I think it was, was it four or six batteries this thing uses? Yeah, just four. So it just uses four AA's or a uh, Boss 9 volt power supply. So now you don't have to use Boss. I'm actually using an Outlaw power supply. It's like a 500 milliamp power supply. More than enough power to run this, okay? But even the batteries will still last you for hours and hours and hours and hours, okay? So you get a lot of use out of, out of batteries. You don't have to go with Boss. Obviously, I'm using an Outlaw power supply. As long as the voltage is 9 volt and the polarity is correct, use any power supply that's going to work that way, okay? So voila. Anyways, um... I like the variety of choices of presets. Now, there are other programmings that you can actually do to this pedal, but you're going to need to read the manual. Now, if you have not got one of these yet, okay, obviously, um, download the manual for free, okay, which you can do from Boss's website. Even though this is a discontinued pedal uh, from Boss, you can still download manuals from older equipment, no big deal. Um, because I think the majority of the stuff from even really old stuff is still up there on their website. You just gotta search out manuals online and, you know, say Boss VE whatever or Boss whatever. Um, you should be able to find it. But, um, anyways, um, some basic things here. You have a mic sensitivity control, which is putting more input into the system, obviously. You don't want to be doing peak clipping. There's a peak light on there. So you want to try and avoid the clipping if you can. Now, momentary, you know, just spontaneous clip that happens here and there, it's not a big deal, even on any recording, and you can always take care of that in software later and edit it out if you find that that clipping is a little a bit of a nuisance. But if it's not a nuisance and it's still clean, fine. It's when you overclip, that's bad, okay? Now, you got to also watch you don't turn the mic sensitivity down too low, especially when you're using a dynamic microphone, um, because these are passive mics. So they're not phantom powered, so there's no preamping to them. That's the whole idea of mic sensitivity, so you have that preamp control, right? So I have mine down just a little bit from off center, which allows me to avoid that peak clipping. Now you could still clip the peak, um, so if you're doing something like this, for example, and you're right on the mic eating it. Okay, you might set it off here and there. That's not an overly bad thing. It was just the odd one. As long as it's not popping your tweeter kind of sound, and you'll know when you hear it, okay? Trust me. Um, then you know that's bad. So you have to move away from the mic further, and, and that peak light won't come on. So you gotta, you, you will find where your best suitability is with um, dynamic or passive mics um, to where you should be for distance from them for proper scene, also to properly EQ your voice. So, and everybody's voice is gonna be different. There's no industry standard of, this is where females sit for basement in trouble, and this is where males sit for basement in trouble. That's bull punky. Anybody who tells you that, tell them I call them a liar, because they are, because everybody's voice is different and unique. We all use different amounts of bass, mid, and treble on our EQs of our vocals, okay? Mine, for example, 
is uh, my bass is at 9, my mid range is at 1, and my treble is actually at 11. And that's where I kind of have that part where I'm like, this is kind of really good. So when you're actually talking um, into your microphone, um, your voice should, when you're talking, should sound very close to the same. Um, you know, it won't sound exactly the same because all speakers are different um, in how they reproduce sound. But you should generally be able to hear yourself pretty much the same, right? Uh, now, if I'm thinking bass right now, I probably could lower my bass a bit, you know, and uh, it's already low enough as it is. So I'll just turn that down a little bit more. So I've lowered my bass a bit, and now that's actually better. Now if I get closer to the mic though, it increases my bass, so I'm actually too close to the mic. So if I'm better further back where I should be, which is about here, so I'm about two inches off the mic, that's about where you should be with a dynamic slash passive microphone. With a corduroy mic, which is phantom powered, that's different. And this thing does have phantom power. Yes! So you can use any mic you want, okay? Including even a uh, regular headset system because they're basically powered systems. Um, so, um, on the other side of life here, what do we think of this pedal? Honestly, guys, I really like it. I am going to get the VE2 again to combine it with it because even though the doubler is nice, the harmonizer works slightly different than what a doubler does. A doubler just doubles what you already have. A harmonizer helps to harmonize what you're doing. So it is actually different. It's almost like a doubler in some senses, but it really isn't. And I'd like to be able to have the option where I could do one thing on one pedal and have the other on the other, right? And um, that would be idealistic. So having a VE1 and a VE2, great combo. Um, and I wouldn't need anything more than that, other than obviously my looper pedal um, in that chain. And so I can daisy chain all these together too, because I've daisy chained my looper into this, and I can still daisy chain a VE2 into all this as well. Um, but uh, and pedal order will actually matter, by the way, for your vocals, uh, if you put the VE1 first or second over the VE2. Now, if you don't need, you know, sophisticated toys, like I've had the Voice Live, Voice Live Extreme 3, I believe it was, the really top end one, like it had all the toys. And I'm like, that's a little overkill, but, you know, because I, I really couldn't, in the end, I really couldn't justify the amount of money because I'm not even going to use like a third of what's in that thing. But there are people who will, and that's perfectly fine, you know. Um, and I've tried another voice live system as well, really didn't care for it too much. Again, there's very little in there that's useful. Um, having a straight just looper pedal though is kind of useless. Um, you need to have something to wet in your voice and that's the whole idea behind harmonizer pedals and, and um, echo pedals or reverb pedals. Um, but like I said, you can do other programming to this that is covered in the manual to mess around more with the reverb and delay circuits in this thing. Just kind of neat. Um, at least that's how I'm taking it from the manual that you can do. Um, and again, you can save up to three memory presets. Um, I would strongly recommend that um, you get either the dual pedal if you want to be able to scroll through memory presets and access the doubler on and off by foot, or if you don't need access to the memory side, just get yourself a single cheap sustain pedal and you can just run your doubler effect. And I know for me, I likely am not going to worry about the whole memory thing, um, you know, because I'm going to use one setting for the majority of my stuff. I'll know the settings already for another thing, and I'll just take a little snapshot of where my controls are and switch that for when I need it, okay? Um, but either way, I really do like this thing, um, and uh, I think it's definitely worth the money. Now, being that I only paid 50 bucks for mine, that was a steal. And what they call light scratches, I call wear. Because unless you're really looking, like there's a very little teensy weensy one right there. And I think that's a little tiny mark there. And that's pretty much about it. I mean, 50 bucks, hey, I'm in. You can buy these uh, brand new still on a few places on the internet. Um, I've seen some for sale for over $300 though, that's the problem. That's way too much. I don't care if somebody never took it out of the box. It's not worth what they paid. It's worth between $50 to $150 max, okay? Maximum, okay? 
that's even the most I would have paid would be about 150 all right so but um, the enhancement thing that that's kind of a neat thing because it uh, when you're on the extreme enhance one two one two one two that can be a little on the tinny side one two one two off off is kind of nice too I wanna serve you Lord I wanna serve you Lord I wanna serve you Lord so I like the green because it's a it's a it's a very mild or um, smooth okay it's, it's not a massive thing right and for enhancement so I think the green is actually the best setting I think pretty much everybody would agree once they mess with this that green is the way to go okay um, it's just I don't know but so um, I say four and a quarter out of five is where I'm at with it now it is not perfect okay it really is not nothing is so it has to lose something there. I think as far as this auto correction thing goes, um, I mean, it's not the, the best system idea in the world. Um, it's, it's good for a novelty, really, as far as I'm concerned, for me anyways, um, because it's, it's only gonna dial into a certain point. But if you want that roboticized or mechanical voicing, hey, it's just, it's fantastic, because that's a great way to get that effect, right? I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. And you hear that, like, ah. There's nothing there. Ah. That kind of throws us out of pitch a bit. Ah. enhancement so I guess it's not completely useless so either way we're still a four and a quarter out of five I don't care um, none of my score by the way is based on what I paid for this thing even though it was a fantastic deal at 50 bucks um, I still would have paid up to 150 and I think it's worth that but no more um, being that it is a boss device I mean hey it is quality built that's for sure it's gonna be rugged and everything so you don't have to worry about it um, now, as far as, you know, the tone control, I'm, I'm really still kind of trying to figure out this tone control a little bit, but, you know, it does have some changes, more drastic on some effects over others. I want to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my days. I want to be like Jesus. It kind of picks tones in your voice where it kind of pops them more and then less on others in your pitch. So that's kind of a really neat feature. Um, so you're going to have to kind of mess with it as well. But <clears throat> in my books, it's still a really awesome pedal. I really think it's a very useful tool for anybody, whether you're playing in church on a worship team and you're a worship leader or another vocalist, or you know you have a few vocalists that have this because you know vocal, vocalists really should have some wetness to their voice. Either way, your leader should still have the higher presence in the team um, as the leader of the songs. But that's kind of a pecking order thing we're not going to really get much into today. Um, there are times when other singers need to overpower the leader, of course, obviously. Um, but even if you're, you're, you're you know, just a general musician playing you know, non-Christian or non-church music, this thing is a great addition to, to your arsenal of toys to really enhance your vocals a lot because going dry you are basically your voice is dead boring you know um, so you're, you're, you need some enhancement there so playing live it is fantastic for if you're gonna record and do everything in one track uh, like I tend to do a lot of my stuff just in one track um, it's less hassle for me then have everything pre-set up ahead of time, make sure you run through your song a few times, done some recordings, make sure your levels are fine, do your final adjustments, and then start over from scratch and cut your final track and you're done. And all you got to do is do your fade in and fade out kind of stuff, right? That's kind of nice. Quick and dirty works. Um, for playing live though, fantastic. Fantastic item. 
Um, it, it's definitely going to make you sound way better when you've got something in your voice other than dryness. Okay? So, definitely a bonus there. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought. Um, I'm not an acapella singer, so don't get on me for that. Um, but um, obviously it is a very, very useful tool, okay? Um, and will definitely help you out drastically with your performances. Um, so anyway, um, other than that, you know, um, that's it. So stay tuned. We have more videos for you. I've got some other cool little gadgets kicking around here we're going to talk about too. So, but this was today's. So, catch on the next one.